Lenovo, vendor locking Ryzen chips in ThinkCenter PCs. Lenovo is taking fire after news broke that their ThinkCenter M75Q Tiny Gen 2 is locking the CPUs installed in the machine. This is being done through AMD's Platform Secure Boot, an optional enterprise level feature that seeks to improve security. So basically what happens is that the CPU gets locked to that PC's firmware key by fuses that are set at the factory. Ugh. If that key changes, like firmware modification, PSB will trip disabling the PC. This prevents remote firmware attacks or tampering between the factory and the customer. Um, firmware keys are common across given model PCs and motherboards, so CPUs tend to be interchangeable as long as that firmware doesn't change. So this is to make sure that a mobile swap doesn't also require a new CPU, which could be very costly in the data center. The problem, that the process is destructive. As PSB works today, the CPU will never work again once the fuse is blown. That is insane. Especially during a chip shortage. The bigger problem, <laughs> it's enabled by default on Lenovo's entire AMD Pro line, including desktops, effectively making them Lenovo-only CPUs. So if a PC recycler or a tinkerer down the road tries to reuse or resell or salvage in some way that CPU, put it in some other system, it will never work again. That's right. It is bound to that craptastic Lenovo motherboard for life. What do they mean enabled by default? Can you disable it? That I don't know. Because it sounded like a hardware thing. I didn't think it was something that would be enabled or disabled. Uh, replacing the CPU on one will pop up a scary warning on boot asking if you want to lock the CPU to the machine. Oh. Wow, that's crazy. So Intel does have a similar functionality in the management engine, but it's in the chipset, not the CPU. Uh, AMD CPUs are able to run a standalone SoC, so theirs is on die instead. So processors with PSB include Ryzen Pro, Threadripper Pro, and Epic. So consumer Ryzen is incompatible with this feature and therefore unaffected. But um, I guess the question becomes, is AMD's... Because honestly, you can't just blame Lenovo for this. It's horrible that they're enabling it by default, and that needs to not be a thing so that it is not bound there. But... I mean, why is AMD building a feature that just bricks CPUs like this in the first place? That's horrible. That is, uh, is, that is pretty true. Is this anti-consumer or is it just half-baked? Did they just screw up? I mean, it wouldn't be the first time AMD just like kind of <laughs> had an idea and then just completely... Didn't execute properly? Yeah, like flummoxed the... I mean, that's not the right use of that word, but just completely screwed up the implementation. I think it's that. Um... I think they saw like a security intention and then just didn't think about it properly. And we're like, yeah, just blow it up. Just make it go boom. During a chip shortage, let's just destroy things for fun. They, they can't reuse it. Don't let them do that. Don't let them tinker. It's like the opposite of right to repair. Yeah, it's really awful. <laughs> <laughs> Little tone deaf, AMD. Wrong time. Not yeah, good. really bad timing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how much e-waste is this going to generate is another one of our discussion questions for this one. Honestly, hopefully not that much. Um, the issue is just that a lot of the ways to get a deal, right? Like picking up an old Optiplex on eBay, mm -hmm. uh, swapping out the power supply, swapping out the GPU, turning it into uh, a budget gaming rig. Or uh, and particularly Xeons, like getting old Xeons, overclocking them, turning them into capable little gaming systems. As more and more of these kinds of tools and functionalities get built into these products, it, those, those kinds of accessible ways for people without a lot of money to get their hands on some kind of gaming experience are going to disappear. And that really sucks because I'm at a stage in my life where I can afford to buy a brand new gaming computer if I really feel like it. But I wasn't always. And... And you a lot gotta, of people aren't. And a lot of people aren't. And so taking away the ways that people who don't have a lot of money have to get their hands on something, like it already wasn't the fastest thing. You can sell the new fast thing by it just being newer and faster. Why do you have to, why do you have to cripple the old stuff? 
Can we all just stop? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that'd be great. The used market has been rough. It's been, it's been the worst time in, in either of our lives to buy computer components at all. Um, and making it so that some of them go boom if you try to mess with it uh, is not good. Don't do that. Uh, Gremlin Injector says, do you really think the product managers fly by the seat of their pants? There are too many controls in the product management process to, prov uh, uh, I think, to allow gaffes like this. I'm a PM at a Fortune 500. Can't imagine something like this happening. Uh, I mean, not every company is smoothly run, even if it's really big and does a lot of revenue is all I really have to say about that, I think. Yeah, your Fortune 500 isn't necessarily the same as all the other ones. Yep. I mean, we, we, we hear about some of the just utterly bananas stuff that was happening at Activision Blizzard. Like, they were an enormous company. Yeah, there, yeah, that's a fantastic example. There, there's some crazy stuff. If you want to go back to that WAN show, people, oh, man, yeah. You want to talk about <laughs> ill-managed things and, like, intense levels of, of uh, oversight.